Well hey there, you're on the internet, I'm trying to get back into this, and welcome to the Triple N Network, where all you newbie noob nerds can find all the news you'll need. Let's look at an ink today, shall we? Now today's ink is the only ink that I've had or tried from Kveco, or Quaco. <laughs> I know it's Kveco, but yeah, uh, it's in my camera. It's their green color, it's palm green. Uh, as you can tell, this is not a standard file. Uh, this I got from my singular IRL pen friend. Uh, let me have a sample of it to test out. So, this is it. Uh, why haven't I gotten more? Because they're a little pricey. Yeah. So, let's get into it. Now, I may have to adjust this a little in post. Uh, camera's making it slightly more neon. Mmm, getting there. But anyways, uh, two pens I used were these. This is a Pilot Metropolitan with a Japanese medium nib, meaning it's more like a Western fine. I think this has almost gray in it. Yep. And a Quaco Ice Sport with a mm, double broad nib. And this definitely has a moss gray in it. Okay, now let's look at some comparisons, shall we? Uh, now the camera is turning this a very yellowy green. It's actually slightly more blue, so I will have to fix that in post. But uh, so here's palm green, and here's pilot mixable green, which is actually quite close. Uh, maybe a little bit darker. And a bit more aggressive, but I didn't say that. Uh, KWZ Green Number Two, which is maybe just a tiny bit more blue and just a half shade lighter. Uh, here's Gerbin's Lire Sauvage, uh, which is a bit lighter, maybe a tiny bit more yellow, not as saturated. And lastly, Diamine's Woodland Green, which is just a little bit more blue. But, uh, yeah, not that you can tell from the camera. God, camera, what are you doing? Anyway, so, there are the comparisons. Now, bear with me. Alright. Chromatography. And it's not quite as neon as the screen is making it at the moment, but there are parts of it that are fairly neon, like through here, and here, and up through this bit, and over here. But, anyways... So this one on the right with the little D, that is the one that I let dry. It's not how you're supposed to do it, but it's how I roll. I feel it's taught me some things over the years. Now the way I do this is I put a line of ink, pretty much instantly drop this in the water. And then when this is dry, this whole test after it's been done, I do this one. So it gives about maybe 8-10 minutes to dry. And as you can see there's not a whole lot of difference. Maybe the line of demarcation is a bit darker. Maybe this isn't quite as empty. And this blue light up at the top sort of separates a bit more. But that's really about it. So we have largely uh, like a faint to the point of almost not being there line where it starts. Nearly empty space, similarly continuing up, except for these few ribbons, where we have a bright, almost neon, grassy green more of a bluish foresty green, and then this blue ridge right up at the top. Pretty much the same here, almost nothing, almost nothing, near fluorescent, lightly, slightly blue foresty green, and then blue up at the top. Resistance test! Whoa. Camera, calm down. Whoa, camera, calm down. This is gonna be fun. Anyways, so here we go. Camera, chill out. Whoa, calm down. We may have to just put this down so it can relax. Yeah, looks like that's how it's gonna be. Okay. Nope, doesn't wanna come down now. Oh, this is gonna be fun. Anyways, uh. Yeah, so here's the water test. As you can see, really, really got it moving. 
Uh, you can see the pattern of where this little swish of darker ink would have continued. So the more you put down, the more of a fighting chance it has, but it's still not much of a fighting chance. It did dye the page. One third bleach solution, fascinatingly enough, uh, actually started to bring out that blue color, but did break up most of it. Now, ammonia pen flush really, really got it moving, but it also affected the, the page, as you might be able to see. Hydrogen peroxide also got it moving, but also affected the page. In fact, more than any of the others. So, there's that. Paper test, top down intensity, Clairefontaine, 90 grams per square meter. Now, this is a, a bright, intense, what I would call true green. Uh, this is, you know, it doesn't really lean towards blue. It doesn't really lean towards yellow. Like when you think of a stereotypical green, this is probably what you're thinking of. Yep, uh, it is slightly, well, more than slightly, it's, it is wet flowing. It's maybe seven out of 10. It's on that double broad. Ooh, it went through four blocks. So yeah, and I mean, it is a double broad, it is a little wet. So that Quaco took 29 seconds to dry. The Japanese medium took 16, but we do get some lovely shading. We do get a bit of a dark halo effect around the wettest parts, especially in that double broad because it's putting down more ink. And I really hope the camera will let me show you this. Oh, come on camera. Can't you just cooperate with me today? Well, anyways, there's a vague little hint of red sheen there, and then there's a little in the T of the... Hmm, hopefully it'll let me show it to you later. But yeah, uh, it's a bright, bold color. It's a bit wet flowing. Uh, you get halo effect around the wettest parts. You get various little hints of a shiny, dark red sheen. Yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty good. No, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo. There is sheen, but only a little bit and only in the halos. And there's, uh, there's, there's, camera, calm down. Okay, it's not highlighter, but, um, yeah, there's, there's essentially no water resistance. Uh, that's pretty much totally gone. This is largely gone. It did dye the page. Uh, it's not ideal. But, yeah, uh, so, doesn't have that going for it, but... Now here's Fabriano Echo Qua. It's an 85 gram per square meter paper. It's my favorite. Now here again, very bright, bold color. <laughs> uh, good saturation is a well saturated ink. It doesn't look thin. Japanese medium took 16 seconds to dry. That double broad took 28. And you can see the amount of ink in the smear. Like this is, this has dense color to it. Again, we have like this, Camera, please let me show this. Please. Has these tiny like hints of red sheen all up through here. But yeah, uh, there's lovely shading. Again, we have the, the halo effect around the wettest parts. No bleed feather spread or echo, which is nice because this is a, a, like a medium to medium dark green color. Yeah, still no water resistance. Now this does become a more like bright, baby, fresh, spring, grassy green, but it's not quite that yellow. Um, and it's really, really gone. So next up is Rhodia, 80 grams per square meter. Has ceramic coating added in the pressing process. Yeah, uh, Japanese medium, 14 seconds to dry. <laughs> Double broad, 27. And again, went through four blocks. Again, very intense shading, but not because of undersaturation. Uh, here is where we really see some sheen. So please, camera, let me show this. Damn it, camera. Anyways, we have some in the halo effects around the wettest parts. We have some, so you see these like really dark outlines here. That's sheen, that's red sheen. Uh, camera is being a pain in the butt today, doesn't want to show it, but it's there. So there are slightly long dry times, but not unreasonable. Not for an ink that's wet flowing and this saturated on these premium papers. It's, you know, and one's a double broad, but again, I don't know why I said there's no sheen, no sheen. So no bleed, no feather, no spread, no echo, which is nice. No sheen, oh, there is sheen. Why do I keep saying that? 
Now, you might see this down here. That is a flaw in the paper. This is the edge of a 38 block of paper and it just got, it was exposed to the air for too long. I was using it as a blotter on my desk, so it was, yeah, exposed to the air. So this is, this is a flaw in the paper. That's why it seems wooly and explodey. That's, that's just, yeah. But yeah, not a lot of water resistance. It's pretty gone. Next up is Tomoe River. I think it's a 52 gram paper. It's very thin. Now this is a cream colored paper. Now, I'd say Claire Fontaine and Rodia are more of a white. I'd say that Fabriano is sort of more of an ivory, and although I can't really tell, uh, this is more of a cream. So it has a little bit more of a yellow in it. And so this really does look uh, slightly more bright young grass green. It sort of brings out the yellow undertones in this green. Now the way this paper works, it is pretty much immune to bleed, feather, and spread. It tends to draw out shading and sheen and dry times and echo. But uh, yeah, here we definitely get a almost violent degree of shading. Here, where it's really at its thinnest, it is like a bright springy green. And then as it gets darker, it gets all the way down to black, almost. And for the love of God, camera, just let me show this. It's red. It's re so it's a nice contrast between the green and the red sheen. Come on. Ah. Uh. Why are you doing this to me today? But anyways, yeah, we get the very distinct halo effects around the darkest parts. Which I like, I think it increases contrast, makes it easier to read. Which is nice. Not that it needs it, because it's not undersaturated and it's not too light. But the Japanese medium took 20 seconds to dry. The double broad took 30, 36, which isn't too bad, because it's a double broad, it's a wet flowing ink, it's very saturated, and this is Tomoe River. I just flicked my camera. I hope nobody gets sick. Now, this is a dark to like a dark medium green or a dark medium green or medium dark green. I don't know. Uh, it is not pale. It is not undersaturated. It's very thin paper, especially in the double broad. You, if you're sensitive to it like I am, you're gonna have some echo problems. Now the scrubby that was me laying it on, laying it on, trying to ensure that I'd have sheen I could get on camera. Apparently, it didn't matter because I'm filming it today, and my camera doesn't feel like it because it's a diva. Now, that Japanese medium, if you're super sensitive to it, it might bother you a little bit, but mm, something to keep in mind. Now, there's no bleed, no feather, no spread, of course, because this is Tomoe River. I hope we don't play that. Now, there is echo, there is sheen, but this paper is also notorious for letting ink just slide away when you add water. Now why is that? It's because it doesn't really let the ink sink in. It makes it sort of dry on top. So when you add water, it's like you're rehydrating the ink. Then when you blot it up, it's all gone. And that's pretty much what happened here. In fact, there is a tiny bit left, but the camera's making it more readable. It is just the barest hint of anything down there. So yeah, there's that. Not a lot of water resistance in general, and definitely not on Tomoe River. Now, these next three tests, I only use that Japanese medium, except to write the name. This is pretty much the world's worst 20 pound copier paper. Maybe even the world's worst paper. I don't feel like that could be a stretch. I feel like that's entirely possible. Now, you might be able to tell there is a lot less shading. In fact, there's almost none left. And... But you could tell even before I brought this in, there's a good degree of spread. Now here's that medium on Tomoe River. Here it is on the 20 pound. Here's that double broad on Tomoe River. Mm. Now it's still a very bright, vibrant color, but we do get, come on, we do get wooliness, we get feathering. We do lose a vast majority of the shading. Took two seconds to dry. And we do have a ton of show through, and we do have spots of full on bleed, which is unfortunate, but this is a very saturated ink and it is a wet flowing ink, even though it's a Japanese medium. Would I like to see better? Yes, but you know, I mean, who, who's like, you know, this ink, it should be worse. You know, I like step back, you're making the rest of us look bad. No, of course I'd like it to be better, but this is still pretty bad. Um, it's very dark, it's very noticeable. As you can see, this is me holding it up. 
uh, once I press it to the back, I mean, you can read it. So that's, that's intrusive. Uh, so yeah, there's bleed, there's feather, there's spread, there's a lot of echo, it's lost a lot of its shading. And there's this. Um, this absolutely exploded. I feel like I'm gonna get a headache because I'm not wearing my glasses, but uh, holy crap. It's like somebody took it out of focus. Um, that would not be easy to read. And what's interesting is you can see that blue separating off like this paper was trying to act like the chromatography paper. Now, next up is Mead notebook paper. It's very common for school children in the United States. Uh, this is the kind that comes out of a spiral notebook, not the kind that comes out of a composition notebook. Those feel a bit more like newsprint. This stuff is fairly susceptible to feathering. Uh, <laughs> and we got that. But also, as you might be able to tell, there's essentially no shading left at all. That's all pretty much gone. Three seconds to dry. Still a very bright, vibrant color. And as you might already be able to tell, there isn't as much spread as there was on the 20 pound. So sort of a nice medium between the Tomoe River where there's none. So there's that. We do have that feathering I was talking about. But we don't have a ton of wooliness. It's just sometimes these little feathers will spike out, which is rather interesting. But yeah, there is some show through. I mean, okay, that is the double broad up there, and that's the scrubby. There is some show through, but there's no genuine bleed. You see how all of this is still very opaque? That's because it's, like, if this is the paper, you know, blown up, the ink has sort of sunk into it, and so it's, it's easier to see because it's closer to the surface in the back, but it hasn't gotten all the way through. Like, once it, once it reaches here, that's when you've got, you know, like this. Like you see how that's very dark and very clearly green? Like it's the same kind of green that we see on the front. That's when it's reached the back and it's starting to come out the back. That's when it would dot the next page. We don't have that. If you're sensitive and don't want to, you know, be able to read what's on the back of the, you know, like if you want to write on both sides, this would not be the best thing ever for you, but it won't ruin the next page the way this might. Like you're writing on it and the page below ends up having green dots. This, you won't have that. Now, this looks like we found Grover's long-lost cousin um, turned into like a furry monster creature. It exploded. Uh, it's still kind of legible. So if you write, use like giant bits of handwriting like I do, if you have macrophagia, uh, maybe you could recover that if you really had to, but it's still gonna be a mess when you get it wet. So yeah. Now, lastly is moleskin notebook paper, which I hate because it's terrible. It is terrible, terrible paper. As paper goes, the paper is made for found, this stuff is terrible. It's just terrible paper. Now, already you can probably tell that we've got problems. Now, admittedly, this is a double broad, so that is where it's most obvious, but you can also see it in that Japanese medium. We are getting a lot of feathering. We are getting an intense, wooliness. You can see the texture of the pulp that makes up the paper. It's still fairly brightly colored. We have no shading. It took five seconds to dry, but this is a mess. This is ugly to look at, even when you're not bringing it in close. Like, even from this distance, you can see that there are problems, which is unfortunate. And we've got a lot of bleed. This is what I mean by coming out the back. That is absolutely coming out the back. This dotted the page below when I was doing this test. Yes, it's a wet flowing ink. And yes, it's well saturated. But a notebook of this size, it's $12, $13. 200 binder size pages of this, this Mead notebook paper. It's like, what is it, $2.99? There's a big difference. There's a big difference in experience. It's, this is a disaster. I mean, there's bleed, there's wooliness, there's feather, there's show through, there's no shading. It's a mess. You can read this from the back. This is a disaster. And then look at this. Even, even the printer paper and the mead, which did weird shit, weird things, crap, 
this has been rendered illegible. Like, so here in the fancy papers where it pretty much entirely washed off, yeah, that's going to be hard to recover nothing. But here, it's like it'll give you false hope, because that's illegible. That's a mess. I hate moleskin. I don't blame the ink for that, I blame the paper. Because other cheaper papers handled it much better. So, there you go, for your consideration, Quaco's Palm Green. Uh, it's a bright, vibrant green. It's, uh, I want to call it a stereotypical green. When you think green, this is what you're going to think. Uh, it shades fairly well on premium papers, has essentially no water resistance. Um, not fantastic on cheap papers, but I've certainly seen worse. Uh, I'm, just please take my word for it, there's red sheen when you lay it on really thick uh, on premium papers. Just couldn't get it on camera. Yeah, so there you go for your consideration from the Triple N Network. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to the channel, and thanks for watching. Bye.